Hey everyone, so it's been kind of a quiet week in the AI world, which makes sense given the holiday week, but you know, given that I learned earlier this month that AI does not take sick days, it apparently doesn't do great with holidays either. So today we're gonna to take a look at Google's new text-to-video platform, and I know what you're thinking, like, do we need another text-to-video platform? But this one does some pretty interesting stuff. I also have a new and free image generator that will allow you to train your own models for custom characters. Okay, let's dive in. So first up from Google, we have Video Poet, which name-wise at least, I guess, kind of fits into the whole Bard theme. So it's no secret that Google has been kind of lagging in the AI image and video space. So it is nice to see them stepping up with Video Poet, and there are some really impressive things in here. So Video Poet currently outputs at either 17 frames or 41 frames. That basically equates to either 2.1 seconds or 5.1 seconds. But it does have a very solid extension function. We'll be taking a look at that in just a minute. The example videos are pretty impressive, although I do tend to take them with a grain of salt. I mean, they obviously are putting their best foot forward. These are probably fairly cherry picked. But there are some overall things that we can glean from this, such as what does the overall motion look like? How does frame interpolation look? And what does it look like in terms of overall aesthetic? For one, it does seem to do fairly well with kind of special effect shots, such as this tree walking through a forest, which kind of looks like a baby ent from Lord of the Rings, um, and definitely has some very developed calves. That's a tree that does not miss leg day. Speaking of lifting weights, I was rather impressed with this chicken lifting weights, uh, which is actually kind of showcasing video poets originality and problem solving skills because I mean, obviously, in a photorealistic style, that is a fairly tough prompt to pull off. Also, this kind of Lovecraftian octopus attacking New York is actually pretty cool. In terms of video extension, Video Poet does seem to do a pretty stellar job. I uh, take this example as kind of Paddington-esque of two teddy bears walking down a rainy street. Obviously, one of the things that we've seen in Gen 2 or Pika is that as you extend a clip, uh, either things get very murky and muddy or, you know, things get super weird. The key to that seems to be the fact that this model was trained across videos, images and text. Because the model encodes the first frame independently, it's able to reserve, I guess, essentially its remaining tokens to the subsequent frames, which then extends into, well, video extensions, allowing for uh, coherent motion style and identity across up to eight seconds. And because of that, you're able to do some interesting narrative things in terms of your extensions. Uh, in this example, we have two raccoons uh, Mad Maxing their way through the forest. Uh, and then on the extension, we have the apocalypse explosion happening behind them. Um, that is a movie that I definitely want to check out. A few more examples before we move on. Uh, this is first person running through the woods and approaching a cabin. Uh, this very much feels like it was trained drone footage. Uh, very much reminds me of a Sam Raimi Evil Dead shot um, and interesting with the uh, person's hands coming out. It almost looks like they're kind of werewolfing their way forward. So maybe it is a, you know, Sam Raimi movie. <laughs> Two quick walking videos. Walking, of course, being fairly challenging for AI video. The mummy outside the Louvre uh, looks pretty great with his, you know, confident strut forward. Uh, and then our couple walking in the rain. Yeah, it's a little bit more on the wonky side there, but mostly I'm just super jealous of the girlfriend's umbrella hat. Video Poet does do image to video. Uh, not really much to say here, it's image to video. I do note that it's interesting that the out video output actually looks sharper than the input images, if you notice on uh, our horse statue here and in our painting. Of course, AI video is always going to do AI video things. For example, in the famous Iwo Jima image here, where uh, when we run it through motion, uh, like a gopher or something appears on this soldier's arm. Remember what I said earlier about them cherry picking only the best of the best. I don't know, maybe, maybe these are just outputs. But the big news coming out of Video Poet is the fact that it does video to audio. The audio is a little bit on the janky side. Let's give it a listen with a teddy bear uh, playing drums. Here's a pink cat playing piano in the forest. In addition to that, it does appear that Video Poet is capable of masked video or video in painting, as well as video out painting, stylization as well, and uh, depth and optical flow, pretty much making it an all-in-one 
AI video solution. Now, all that said, as very typical of Google, uh, it has not been fully released to the public as of yet. That said, I do think that this one will release fairly soon and not, you know, sort of vanish into vapor like a number of other Google projects. It does feel like 2024 will be the year that Google starts shipping a little bit harder. Uh, and given, you know, these kind of wonkier outputs that we saw in the video poet demos, at least we're not going to have a Google Gemini situation on our hand. I don't think anybody's going to claim that was faked. Moving on to a new AI image generation platform that will allow you to train your own models for consistent characters. This is Scenario.com which builds itself more as a game asset generator. Although when you dig in, you'll see that there's a lot more that you can do with it, including, you know, upscaling your image, uh, pixelating an image if you want to, and even vectorizing it. For today, we're just going to concentrate on the training of your own models. To do that, obviously, you just simply sign up with Scenario uh, and then come over to this Models tab and push the plus button. Hit the Start Training on Train Your Own Model. And from there, you can add up to 50 images. Uh, you can choose to do so in SDXL or SD 1.5. For the most part, I would pretty much recommend leaving all of these sliders at the default setting, but you know, feel free to experiment should you choose. So I took a number of images of myself and trained a model so that I could become the man in the blue business suit. Prompting is definitely in the more typical stable diffusion style. Um, you know, obviously be as descriptive as you possibly can be in your prompt and negative prompts do play a pretty large part. I did end up with some fairly decent results feeding it about 10 images. Uh, the prompt here was photography, man in a blue business suit walks down a busy city street. I didn't give it a ton of negative prompts. I really spent a lot of time on my prompt, but you know, uh, it kind of looks like me. Another one yielded this. I did prompt for a close up on this one and it gave me a close up. Um, yeah, I mean, not too bad. I do have those sunglasses too, so that didn't just come out of nowhere. Here's an angry me rocking a jacket over a jacket look. But the best result I got was by utilizing our Mid Journey V6 man in a blue business suit and using that as an image reference in scenario. For a deeper look at what you can do with scenario, Araminta K did a pretty cool 12 panel story utilizing it, in which you can tell it definitely holds a consistent style and a consistent character across all 12 images. There's a lot more to explore with Scenario, and although it does have paid tiers, the free tier pretty much gets you everything, although you do have cooldown periods and all of your training happens in low priority mode, basically. It's gonna take you longer to do everything, but it is free. So that's it for today, and honestly, that's it for 2023. But I did wanna take a second to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of you who have watched, commented, and supported over this year. It's been a super crazy year and I cannot be happier that I got to spend it with you. There's some really cool stuff coming up for 2024 and I can't wait to share it with you. In the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful New Year's and I mean, I guess I'll see you next week. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.